Welcome back to the channel. In this video series, we're going to walk through how to set up an SFTP server on AWS. Whereas a lot of other tutorials stop short of production features, we're going to go through all the necessary steps to create a true production ready server with AWS. If we look at the diagram on the left, we see the components interacting. We have our SFTP client, which will either be ourselves as an admin or the end user client accessing our SFTP server. It accesses the server on AWS transfer family. That's where the SFTP server is hosted. It then connects to AWS API gateway and Lambda for authentication. It accesses AWS secrets manager to access the credentials for the user that's trying to log in. If those credentials are authenticated, then it can access AWS S3 to return the data to the user that the user is permission to see. Before we get started, you can support the channel by doing a few simple things. Support me on either Patreon or GitHub sponsors, subscribing to the channel, liking this video and sharing on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, or even just your friends, starting the GitHub repo, and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot. I'd really appreciate it. So let's walk through the server steps that happen. The client first initiates an SFTP connection. Then the AWS transfer family sends a request to AWS API gateway to authenticate the user. The AWS API gateway invokes the Lambda function, which is our custom authentication provider to authenticate. AWS Lambda verifies the credentials against AWS Secrets Manager for the username that's trying to log in. If those are all correct and the user is correctly authenticated, then the data is transferred from S3 that the user is permission to see. So with the final product of our video series, we're going to have an AWS Transfer Family SFTP server. You're going to allow authentication via SSH keys or password authentication. We're also going to restrict access on a server or user level via incoming IP. And finally, we're going to allow email notifications via AWS SNS, Simple Notification Service. This is very important when the client wants to know immediately when files are uploaded to the SFTP server, they will get an email notification alerting them that they have been uploaded. This is very important and very helpful for the end client and commonplace and production ready servers and any kind of true corporation. So the outline, we're going to start off by creating the SFTP server out of the box provided by AWS with SSH key authentication. This is a common place, and this is what Amazon provides out of the box. Then we're going to create an SFTP server using password authentication. This is much more helpful for less tech-savvy users and allows easier access. We're also going to create separate IAM base and admin user roles and policies. The admin user is going to allow them to upload, delete, and download. The base user is only going to be able to download. This is where a lot of other tutorials stop short and not implementing these features, which is basic requirements for any kind of true SFTP server, whether that be production or even development. But we're going to cover these features in this series. We're also going to set up an AWS web application firewall to restrict IP access on the server level. It's very commonplace to restrict access to an SFTP server based on incoming IPs. You do not want the SFTP server open to the internet. You want to restrict access based on the IPs the client provides so you don't have unauthorized access. And this works great if the client only gives you single IPs for say an office environment. But if you have many clients working from home, don't have a proper VPN setup, they're trying to use their home IPs or some other mess, then you need to restrict IP access on a client level. This is a special case, but it does come up. We're also going to cover this as well. And finally, the AWS components we're going to be working with are quite exhaustive. This list may seem kind of daunting, but the components link together very easily, and we're going to see how they all connect very simply as well. We have the transfer family, which stores the SFTP server. Simple storage service, S3, is going to store the documents that are presented to the end user. Simple notification service, as we covered before, this sends the email notification to the end user when a file is uploaded. REST API gateway and Lambda, this is going to be our authentication providers. Secrets manager, which stores the credentials. IAM, which has a different policies and user roles for base and admin users for different access permissions. Web application firewall to re restrict IP access on the server level. And finally, CloudFormation, which is going to allow us to set up all these AWS components automatically in code instead of having to go to the AWS management console and click, click, click to create them manually. And finally, refresher. Here's a document as presented at the beginning of the video. This should seem much more clear now. You should have a much better understanding of how all the components link together. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to walk through how to create the SFTP server on AWS. Stay tuned for more.